A very good day to you and welcome to you. Please enjoy with us today. This morning and today and for your Bible study, whenever you may listen to it, I want to share with you a few things about judgments again. Now, I'm just going to give you our details first, and then we're going to look at those. It's Grace Now Ministries. I'm Paul Weiss. Uh, we have the Sunday services that are sent out either on WhatsApp as an audio, Facebook, and of course they're on YouTube and on our and they're on on our website, um, which is www.gracenow.co.za. So that's our website. But I'm Paul Weiss. You can get hold of me on 082-473-0041, or you can email on paul at gracenow.co.za. And you can send that information of any questions you may have, any answers you may want, whether relative to what we're dealing with or not. But I just wanted you to know that um, because it is critical that you have a facility of questions being answered regarding your uh, Christian faith. Now, what I want to deal with today is judgments. So, uh, judgment is something that many people judge others for their behavior, but they don't make wise judgments in what God intended, which was his word, to give us the insight to make better decisions. So our judgment of what is right and wrong would be clearer, would be better, and would be extremely helpful and powerful in our lives. So I'm just going to touch on a few points on that. Um, and as I do, I trust they will be helpful for you. Okay, many people feel that Christians reject them because their behavior is judged, but not necessarily their belief. Now, if a person believes right, they're going to behave right. So it's one of the things that I want to draw your attention to. Do not condemn the behavior of people. Rather share the grace of God. Um, teach them that whatever they may do wrong, God has forgiven. If they don't listen and it's affecting you, then you have to judge their behavior, not because you choose to make it a spiritual thing, but because there's a consequence that's negative and destructive in your life. And judgment, in the, in the understanding of the word used, uh, and there, there are many variations, is simply a verdict either favorable or unfavorable um, and rewards and salvation are, are the most astounding examples which i did touch on last week so you can go to that to get the detail but when you speak about rewards people get very very worried and envious that if you all christians god's going to reward some but what if he why should he reward some and not others well quite frankly because shouldn't you get a reward at the end of the month for your work and that work is not the works that we do. Um, it's actually going to be founded in understanding the word of God, which we call doctrine first. You can't fulfill God's desires if you don't have the understanding of his life. And then, of course, salvation. Many people judge salvation and say, but I've served the Lord my whole year, my whole life. This guy hasn't. Is that fair? Because he still goes to heaven. Yes, he does. But haven't you had a beneficial life by serving the Lord? Because his judgments have helped you to be wise and make the correct decisions? Yes, I believe you have. And then many people are correctly so offended by the Christians. And they're not willing to go to Christians or to church because they've been terribly condemned for behavior rather than having heard the glory of the gospel of grace. So um, I mentioned that. And then I also want to highlight the fact that we love judgment no matter who we are. We don't want God to judge us. And you know what? He won't judge us unless we reject his forgiveness. When he died on the cross, he made provision for you, for me, for every person that has and will ever live to be a part of heaven. Because he gives life at conception and he desires that personality to be with him. But because he's just, he will have to judge our wrongs like a magistrate or a, a jury. But you know what he does? He ties two things up. He ties his love and judgment, and he judges his son, Jesus Christ, on the cross in our place so that we don't have to face that judgment. But if we reject him, we are opting and we are saying, 
God, I don't want to believe in Jesus. I don't want to trust Jesus. I know that's what you've told me in your word, but I want to reject it. And on that basis, I will take whatever punishment. And God is a just judge. Would it be fair if somebody uh, went to court, if somebody had done something wrong and the judge had no justice? And it's one of the problems of our day. Many people will tell you that that's one of the problems. And then judgment should be in the fear of God and by that, what I mean is people use the fear of God and they say, but we must fear God. No, no, we must love God. But because we love him so much and respect him so much, we want to honor him and we fear that we might get it wrong because that's not our desire. If we understand what he did for us and every one of us deserve a lost eternity in hell and punishment that never, ever ends. It's, a, it's got no reverse gear. Um, and that's justice because God is just and therefore he's a just judge, but he rather judged his son in our place. And hence, that's the gift of eternal life because he paid the price of our sin. We don't have to go to hell. That's what God did in his grace. Um, and then, of course, one of the other reasons that we want to do what is the right judgments, right decisions, right separation of right and wrong so that we don't do things that are wrong even though we know we are forgiven for them because every sin was forgiven for us when we trust christ he had paid the whole price past present and future but what happens is that when we set a poor example and the bible has quite a few references to this in the modern paul's writings for us today we drop the weaker brother because Christ died for him and wants him to know what's right in God's eyes. And sometimes the weaker brother, in other words, a person who has been saved, who is not as strong in the word. When it says weaker, it's not talking about his physique. It's talking about his mental strength of the power of the knowledge that God brings. But until he gets to actually understanding, he is the weaker brother. Um, so what I want to uh, deal with here is the fact that judgment is a very good thing. And that's why the books of the Bible are written in a way. And I'm going to read this verse to you where Paul writes to Timothy. Now, remember, Paul is our model for today in terms of what he says is the instruction God's giving for today. And it's not just instruction. That's possibly the wrong word. But it is the insight. It's the knowledge. It's the understanding which he wants us to know, which is the most up-to-date information we have. In other words, I was saying to somebody this week, if I tried to fulfill the constitution of South Africa and I did something racial, they would lock me in a prison. They would certainly come out against me. But I'm fulfilling the constitution of South Africa. Do you know what I'd quote? I'd quote the Constitution, and I'd get into terrible trouble if it's a racial issue. But you know what I'd be doing? I'd be quoting the wrong Constitution that became obsolete because it was surpassed with a more relevant and powerful Constitution for the protection of people. So what I'm saying is that if we neglect Paul's writings of the New Testament and we try to apply everything in the Bible, it would be like me saying, but I'm fulfilling the constitution of South Africa. And what would I be fulfilling? The previous constitution. And they would say, but that's not relevant. That was a previous constitution. That was a previous time. That was something that was a constitution, 100% correct, but it is not the current constitution. And that's what the Bible in Paul's own words, at least three times, he says the dispensation the dispensing, the sharing of God's grace today, unlike the law of the Old Testament and the law under which even Jesus Christ lived, which was given to the nation of Israel. Anyway, if you listen to Sunday's message, I'll touch on that. Now, what I want to do is I want to touch on the judgment aspect. And this verse that I'm going to quote now is from the book of John, but it is incredible. And what I want to highlight um, is how God has dealt with humanity from the very beginning. He's given, him his, uh, given us and humanity an understanding of life in every facet, every 
uh, generation, every people he's given that to. Now, what I want to do is show you how Jesus Christ himself, part of the Godhead that became visible to us, how he dealt with the Pharisees who were religious leaders, who had the writings of Moses available, but they never gave them credit for what they taught. They acknowledged the body of them as being written by Moses, but they didn't know the detail. They didn't apply them and they didn't trust them. Now listen carefully to me now, please. I deal with Christians who are Christians by cultural lifestyle, but they've never personally trusted the death of Christ in their place, in his burial and in his resurrection that their sin is forgiven and they have a confidence, a contentment, a joy and a peace that when everything goes wrong, it still rattles us. When we lose a loved one, these eyeballs still fill with tears because we love them and we miss them. But if they believed in Christ, we know it's a temporary separation until that day that we're together with him or her in heaven, but this time with our Lord face to face. But God's word is what he's given us in the interim that gives us insight to make wise judgments and to understand things that give us peace. Now, that's where faith is simply trusting that. So what I want to do with, deal with quickly um, in this case is just this verse, because personally, again, and I share a lot of things that I find so personally, not only amazing, but beautiful, um, is how Jesus dealt with Moses's law and what he said he said me and the law same thing if you don't listen to me and you don't listen to the law it doesn't matter but i'm not going to accuse you moses's law that you have not followed will be your accuser um amazing let's have a look look at this beautiful verse john 5 says do not think that i will accuse you to the father and john 5 as I mentioned, he's talking to people who were highly religious leaders that had found a beautiful place for themselves in the status of being the religious leaders to a very religious nation they had misled, but they had power, they had status, they had wealth, they had influence. They were in fact the most powerful people of the day, but except for the true believer in Jesus Christ who was saved. Um, but What it says in John 5, 45 to 47, is most, most amazing about, and what I'm talking about here is not just talking about the law of Moses and Jesus, giving credit to it as if it was him, or the father speaking to them, because the word of Moses was equated as something but Jesus says, Moses is going to accuse you. Not me. Moses is going to accuse you. When you stand before the Father, these things were written by Moses, the law, uh, many other things. But you didn't listen to it. And it was what I might call the voice of God on paper or on papyrus as they had in various other texts. But it was written down so that they had it. Today, every book that opens with the name Paul, from Romans to Philemon, it's 13 books, is what is said to us today. So what was written to Moses, Paul explains, was the law to make men guilty so that grace could make us free. So we need to understand the law, Moses' writings, but boy, what Paul gets given as a message to reveal, and a new message, is so beautiful, because he says, that made you guilty, but grace makes you free. So uh, join me as I, I go to this verse. I, I find it most fascinating. I hope you do too. And as you understand how the scriptures are rightly divided into their sections, like I spoke about the constitution, how alive the scriptures come, because we're not trying to fulfill things that don't happen, can't be done, signs, wonders, miracles. They don't exist. People claim them, they name them, they claim them, they frame them, they do the whole trip. But let me tell you, I've never met an amputee who got his leg back on a medical form. Never, never, never. 
but that's what Jesus did. People who lay couldn't get, couldn't move, lay next to the pool. And you know what? He said, get up and walk. And the guy jumped. He, he said to the blind man, I will give you sight. Blind from birth. He got his sight again. Those are miracles. Anyway, let's not head there just quite yet. Um, what I want to do now is just look at these beautiful verses because I do find them fascinating. So in John 5, what happens is that Jesus is speaking. And in these verses, the amazing thing is that um, Jesus is dealing with these people which were religiously driven but not accurately and truthfully making judgments that were correct of what is God's word and what is he saying to us. And then Jesus says to them, do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. Now there's an interesting thing. He claims the power of the Father by Jesus. Um, and if you read um, verse 20 of chapter 5, it says, for the father loveth the son and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. Um, so he's claiming equality with the father and being the son of God. So he's claiming to be a person of the Godhead. And what it says is, do not think that I will accuse you to the father. So, they recognized the father, but they didn't recognize Jesus. Problem, problem, problem. And then he says, there is one that accuses you, even Moses. And that word even can also mean namely. Um, sometimes taken from the word Kai, which is the Greek K-A-I, but it can also mean namely Moses um, or even Moses, in whom ye trust. They trusted Moses. But you know what? They never believed him. And here's an interesting statement that I said years ago. And when it dawned on me, it is so powerful in its own right. How many people, including you and me, can easily believe in Jesus, but we don't believe what Jesus says? In other words, we believe in Jesus, but we don't believe Jesus. And we do our trust, and you do our trust. I know I do. But there's a big difference between believing in something which makes it remote, it makes it foreign, it makes it a fact of history, and believing him, which is taking his words seriously and trusting him to be saved and trusting him to live this life. For it says, for had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? In other words, Moses is given the same authority as Jesus Christ verbalizing what he's saying to those who were non-believers. They believed in Moses, but they didn't believe the detail of what Moses said. And boy, I can relate that to modern Christian faith. Eh? People believe in Jesus and they have these worship services and the Holy Spirit was present. No, the Holy Spirit indwells us. He's present 24 seven. If you highlight one thing, all you're doing is highlighting your emotions not the presence of God. Take me up on it. I'd love it. Um, but I'm, I'm sharing that because it's so important. Then the other thing that I want to do is the word judgment is simply and predominantly judging that which is right from wrong. God says, I'll give you the ability to judge or I will judge what is right and wrong and give it to you. And through Moses' writings, there were many things. Thou shalt not murder. Well, that's a pretty good judgment of what is right and what is wrong. And again, uh, I'm saying this as a hypothetically, but <laughs> like with <laughs> David and Goliath, David took out Goliath. But you know what? He had other stones in case the brothers came as well, because he had brothers. So if you're going to murder, you're going to be fighting. Ask the gangsters. They know that story. Anyway. Um, what I want to do is, is just highlight in the scriptures where 750 plus times the word judge or judgment is used or judges. So again, I just want to highlight judgment is such a key thing, but you've got to have knowledge, you've got to study the scriptures. And how do you do that? Well, write to us and we will help you. It's a process. And most of all, the first and predominant thing is to get an overview 
and know what he's written to you and what he's written for you in the entire scriptures. So very, very key, what is known as rightly dividing, according to Paul in 2 Timothy, but so is the dispensing of truth of God, where one dispensing of truth overrode another, like I shared in the Constitutions. Um, if you don't know that, God forbid that we stand before the Lord one day and we can't say, but Lord, your word explained it. Here are the verses. This is what you said. And you know what? That's not what these people did with, jo with, with Jesus when they spoke of Moses. They didn't say, but look, this is exactly what Moses said about you. They didn't know. They believed in Moses. They acknowledged what he wrote, but they didn't know it. There's no excuse for it. Ignorance is not a good excuse. And you know what? All of us, all of us, and I'm going to say this as it be, none of us actually do enough in God's word because it should be like a love letter we read every day and we grow and we study and we take a word and we look for its usage in other passages to get the fullness of what God's principle is sharing, but his principle will relate to his person. So it's not just the principle. It's not just, oh, well, I'm going to be a good person. It's I'm going to love the Lord and boy, I don't want to disappoint him. So whatever I need to do, I'll do because I want to please him because he has pleased me because he gave his life for me and saved my soul from hell and destined it for heaven even before I get there. I hope that makes sense. Having said that, I just want to show you um, these verses that have come that I highlighted and extracted from the Bible. E-sword, E-sword, in other words, electronic sword. The word of God is the sword of God, it says. But I've highlighted them, um, which I extracted, just to give you an idea of how many times this word is used. And that judgment is a brilliant thing because your best decisions are made when you judge wisely. Um, but the judgment of sin, if it's not forgiven, means a consequence. We don't face that as believers. Um, so let's have a look here. Look at these verses that I, I refer to. Um, this is the last part of it. It's actually unbelievable how many pages it is, but there's 758 matches to the word that I put in, which is J-U-D-G. In other words, it'll cover judgment, judges, judged, all of those words. But look at these pages and pages and pages and pages of this. Um, words of the word judge, judgment. So God says, and one of my favorite verses in, is in Colossians chapter 1, where Paul says, pray for spiritual wisdom and understanding. And that's what we seek. And that is sourced only in the word of God. Um, now, if you look at all of these passages, um, it says, stir up thyself and awake to my judgment, even unto my cause, my God and my Lord. And you know what? You can go anywhere. Um, and it says things. I'm picking the shorter ones though. And that is, doth God pervert judgment or doth the Almighty pervert justice? No, he doesn't. Um, you can go anywhere. So David reigned over all Israel and executed judgment and justice among all his people. He executed judgment and justice. So justice is the basis of making the right judgments. Is it just? Now, let me tell you something in conclusion here. Everybody wants justice. We all want justice. It's a longing within us that when we see political leaders, when we see corruption, when we see all the things that people chirp flat out about when it comes to particularly politics, you know something? We seek justice. But when justice should make a judgment against us, not a punishment, just what you're doing is not right, you know what we do? We can sometimes ignore it. Now, that's an interesting thing. And I want to say to you, I hope that it stimulates your thinking in what the scriptures do. As I said last week, I think it was, if you have not got e-sword on your laptop, your computer, whatever it is, um, download it. It's free. It has tremendous search capacities as a concordance and enjoy the word of God by growing and growing. Because God forbid, 
when I face Jesus, I don't want to say to him, you just like those non-believers who said they believed in Moses, but Moses will judge you. In this case, he'll say, but Paul will judge you because he told you what was right. And I believe that we don't want to do that because anything that is godly is going to enhance our whole family. So once again, I say, please, my email, paul at gracenow.co.za send an email, send a WhatsApp, send whatever you like, but please allow this thinking from God's word that I found so thrilling to be a value to you as well. The Lord bless you. Mm -hmm.